We are back at it again today, and this video is not only about the four rotor, but a handful of equipment that almost every car has. Short of maybe the Fred Flintstones car, it's all about brakes, and the shipment of Wilwood brake pedals and assemblies is here. Hey, what's up, Rob? What's up? <laughs> How are you? Good. So that's the actual brake pedal assembly. Okay. That's the whole thing. Mm, yeah. This is the most beautiful part of all this. Brake clutch. Is it the shifter? Uh, close. It's a handbrake. Uh, Jarrett just asked a very genuine question. Is that is this the shifter? Well, my shifter will have something that looks like this, you know, for sequential. Beam, beam, beam. But this is actually the e-brake. Unlike a normal car where either it's, you know that ratcheting up here or like a lot of dodges, you press that pedal down here and you have a little handle to release it. This is literally just you forcing a secondary master cylinder to actuate the rear brake. Just a couple of things that are really important about this. This is their more advanced setup that allows you to tune with greater adjustability on a lot of your brake pedal feel, how much it hits the front rear, all of the, that sort of stuff is all adjustable. And in a car like this, we need every bit of adjustability. We don't know exactly how it's gonna feel. We don't know how the dive is gonna affect more weight into the front. And I'm using two sets of front brakes. One's meant for larger wheels, one's meant for slightly smaller wheels in the front and back. So there's a lot of unknown variables that require tuning to the effect that we'll even have a brake biasing adjuster in the car. Won't get it modified much once you get it tuned in, but this is something where when you clamp on the brake, the front and the rear are gonna act differently. If you've ever installed like a big brake kit where you just do the front wheels, well you're throwing off the stock bias on the brake system and you can actually increase your braking distance instead of decreasing it. So in this case, you're taking the control into your hands literally and saying, you know what? Let's go a, bit, a little bit more to the front. Let's give it a little bit more to the rear and adjust it to however you like. Now this one is a compact master cylinder meant for the handbrake. So the handbrake is literally forcing this to then send fluid to the slave cylinder, which would be on the rear wheels. This is considered the master cylinder. You're actuating it, sending fluid to wherever you want it to go. So they may not say it on here. Oh, they do. They say it right here. 0.75, which in fractions is three quarters, and 0.88, which is seven eighths. This is the bias between the front and the rear, just by, by pedal size. There's a distinct difference between these two. Something that's really cool that Willwood offers is these are, you know, the traditional sort of OEM type of little plastic tanks. We upgraded to these. Almost dropped it. <laughs> With the built aluminum reservoir, the heat can't affect this and melt the plastic. Not that that's a super common occurrence, but very durable. Nothing can really go wrong with billet. This is really interesting. I'm gonna learn a lot about this sort of setup. This being the 7 eighths would be, you know, the front wheels. It's gonna end up going something like that, connected in here. And then again, this balancing bar is a lot of adjustment between the front and the rear. They both go side by side and then the clutch goes all the way over here. Let's just get it kind of set up and then we'll go put it in the car and explain this whole assembly more. Interesting. Okay, so this doesn't need to be turned around. I thought it hooked into this. It just, it just threads in and then you just kind of like lock it in. But there you go. Assuming they stayed still, pushing the pedal and then adjusting this. You can see it right there, side to side. That's so cool. Let's put the clutch line in as well. How cool, I don't, I never knew anything about these sort of setups. You see them at like booths or at SEMA or anything, and you just look at them and you're like, okay, cool, I get it, kind of, but not really. But what you're seeing here is front and rear brakes. Literally, the front two tires go to this, the rear two tires go to this, and then this goes to the clutch slave cylinder. And simply pressing the tire, there's like a little piston in there, pushes fluid out. There's no fluid, so that's not realistic, but you can see that this bar automatically adjusts by the difference on these two cylinders. Go. <laughs> you didn't give me the nod. All right, this is just kind of an initial mock-up. All of that metal can be replaced. 
and it will be. <laughs> but the pedals are gonna end up somewhere back there. Oh, I see the bar. Yep. Oh boy. That's, a, that's the problem with building a custom car, guys. Everything matters. What the hell are you guys gonna do with that existing pedal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, where's the new one gonna go? Yeah, I mentioned that in the previous video, but you didn't watch it, obviously. <laughs> <What>? Dick. <laughs> <laughs> All of you guys are attentive people that watched my previous video. Jarrett is not. Just because he didn't edit it, he doesn't. He refuses to watch my edited videos. But I mentioned that this pedal, even though it's a brake pedal from the existing RX-7, it's in the place of where a gas pedal ideally would be. Like I said just a second ago, if you're an awesome viewer like all of you, and you're not like Jarrett who didn't watch my video, this pedal is the original brake pedal from the FD. It sits now as a great spot for where my gas pedal feels right on my right leg. I have only this much space for pedals, so they have to be pretty close to each other. We have to fit all of this package into this area and have room for a gas pedal, because this is clutch, this is brake, and then the gas pedal will be next to it. What we do have the ability of is a remote reservoir, so this can actually disconnect, mount somewhere else, and then have like a hose running to it. So what I suggested was that the hose be some sort of metal so it doesn't affect the pressure. <laughs> okay, um, what Jared's asking is the hose on a reservoir on the system that feeds extra fluid oh, well, here, here be, be metal go. instead of anything else? When you use this, when you push that, it yep. has to draw some sort of fluid, right? Right. And if it's far away... Mm -hmm. You're afraid of a, a hose collapsing? Well, you know. <laughs> pressure. Guys, you know what? I'm going to defer to my new lead engineer, Jarrett. For those of you wondering, what's going on is Jarrett has a good... He has good intentions. But the simple process here is that a reservoir is so big, the, the fittings for that are so big that it's just simply almost vacuum feeding fluid right in. There's no pressure. It's just simply a slight bit of pressure, a slight bit of vacuum sucking it in <laughs> off camera. <laughs> I explained this to Jarrett and, I, and it's like they explain it like I'm five sort of thing. The reason that this won't cause a problem not being a metal hose is because this breathes in and out like this. <sighs> this is more like... <laughs> it makes sense though. <laughs> a reservoir on a stick. No, oh, not a metal hose, Jarrett. Oh, plug this in. Plug this other end into that. And then that goes on there. And that solves our problem. That looked cool, didn't it? Like pulling the pin off of a grenade. There we go. When I go to use the brake, this one's a forward action like this, and I'm gonna actually mount it like this. You know, you see all those guys, the drift, drifting guys, which I'm not. You see them, I'm now a professional drifter because I have the Formula D. <laughs> I skipped all the other classes. Dropped to like a car meet, like, what's up? They're like, oh, you're a Formula Drifter. <laughs> we didn't know, sorry, we'll let you in. Give a nice shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like that girl with her plate of like dessert. Like, I just want to get a good picture of it. I'm never actually gonna use my brake. I just want to get a good picture of them. As many of you know, this transmission will be shifted pneumatically. There's a little air compressor thing and a little pneumatic hammer action going on here, and it shifts the transmission through here. But you can put a shifter on it, not this, but you know, just like you see like with the Hunicorn sort of sequential shifting there. Obviously we'll have to look at professional drivers and drifters and uh, car operators to know where this is best put, but we'll figure that out. So it looks like we'll be uh, finishing that whole process up beginning of next week, which is a little bummer because this is the beginning of this week, but they're busy on three other trucks. So that's fair game. He told me about that ahead of time. That gives me plenty of time to work on the carbon fiber drive shafts as well as the carbon fiber axles. You heard that right, we're actually putting carbon fiber axles onto this car. And if you saw the previous video, oh, you know what, I really didn't even film much about this video. Well, I'll tell you right now. Uh, this is one of the CV joints, this is a 934. It's about $500 uh, in equipment right here. And uh, you need two of these for each of the rear axles. This thing is nasty. 
Uh, it's capable of handling almost all the torque and horsepower that we, we need it for, but uh, we're gonna have this mated to carbon fiber, about two inch in diameter carbon fiber shafts, and this thing's gonna be just absolutely nasty looking, beautiful, polished and all that. So we've got a lot of other pieces. Winter's diff needs some more work. After all of that, beginning of next week, we're gonna get the pedals sized up, the seat sized up, and then the car's coming on the ground and it's coming back to daddy. God, that's creepy. It's coming back to papa. Oh, it's still weird. It's coming back to Rob. Nope, that's third person. That's really weird too. It's coming back to me.